Alright, hello. So I'm going to go into um, history of another Tacoma band originated in Tacoma. And they've actually had quite a few bands. Um, and I I was around. I mean, they were friends and they and it was a band I liked and I actually played drums one time at a party um, when they were Inspector Love. The drummer was out of town. I learned like I don't know, probably ten songs or something, and and played one party with them. Anyway, so um, the the bands that that formed at one point that were more well known and still are together would be the Briefs and Green Apple Quickstep. So back in about 1983. Uh, I, I became friends with um, some other punk rockers that were across town, and one of one of the friends was Dan, and Dan went on to play in all these bands I'm going to talk about. So he was uh, he was just another punk rock kid in Tacoma that that loved like finding new music and playing guitar and uh you know writing songs and you know i mean hanging out with other punk rockers going to shows all that stuff anyway so <clears throat> there was a band i think he might have been in the deprived i don't remember exactly but i i, I think that he was I may be mistaken on that. So that's going to be about 1983. So there was a short-lived punk band called The Deprived in Tacoma. And I don't even really remember what they sounded like. They were pretty noisy. So that's about the time that I first met, you know, met some of the other punk rockers from across, to, you know, Tacoma. And at that time, you know, 80, 83 was when... You know, we all we all kind of found each other from different parts of of the city. You know, there was the Hell House, there was Fur Furcrest, there was North End, and and beyond. You know. Anyway, so I'm going to skip forward a little bit. So about the time Noxious Fumes started in 1984, um, Dan. I want to say Eric, Eric and Dylan Purchase were starting to play. I may, I may be missing somebody. Starting to play in a in a band they called Sunshine Storm. So Sunshine Storm would have been, you know, like the first. I think the first group where they they had a name, you know, and they played. There were some parties that they played. I don't remember if they actually played a show. They might have played the Community Road Theater, but I don't think so. I think they had changed their name at that point. So they started practicing at the Hell House a little bit, and I actually recorded them on a cassette tape. And it's probably long gone, and I think I remember who I let borrow it. But on one side was a really weird uh, Noxious Fumes recording. On the other side was Sunshine Storm, band practice. So I instantly liked them. They they did like some originals, but they did like Chinese rocks, and I don't remember what other songs they did, but it was kind of like <sighs> it's more like late seventies punk style. And you know, I mean, those guys those guys were friends of mine at, at that point, and so it was exciting. Like another band in Tacoma, and there wasn't many bands. I mean, it was like a handful, you know, really. I mean, I could probably I could probably name like, you know, not even ten bands that I knew of that were of the punk genre that were, you know, playing shows. So it's recording. All right, good. Um, anyway, so that that went on a little bit. Sunshine Storm, and then I don't remember how. Uh, Adam started singing in the band, but he did. Friend Adam, he was a North End friend, um, 
And he started singing in the band, and they changed their name to Inspector Love and the Ride Me Babies. So Inspector Love, th at that point, so it would have been, no, oh, I want to say 85-ish, you know, those guys are probably, they're probably like, fuck, Perky, how do you remember this shit? <laughs> I don't know, I mean, that was my life, you know, you know, there's, there's, a. Uh, it's just memories like that I have that I I mean that was what I did that is what I lived music you know friends band I mean that was it for me playing music you know going seeing shows excitement about other new bands that's what I did okay so uh, Inspector Love gets together and now they're like you know it's like Adam Dan um, so, Dan on guitar, Eric on bass, Dylan on drums, I'm pretty sure, you know, they're, I'm, I might be missing, you know, I want to say Nick may have played drums for a little bit, it's kind of, my memory's a little bit sketchy there, and then Adam was singing. So now, they were Inspector Law, and at that point, actually, made me a tape. So this is actually a tape of the very first Inspector Love recording. So this is before Tyler started singing. This is with Adam here. And they were p fucking punk rock, man. You know, they were. They weren't fast. It's fast. They, I think they had a couple fast songs, but, but they're, I mean, I think their, their thing was more late 70s, but not thrash, you know, like, anyway, so, those guys played for a little while, and that's, that's the point where I played drums for one party, because Dylan was out of town or something, so I just learned the songs, and I remember we did, um, we did the Beastie Boys, uh, you gotta fight for your right to party, right, at, at a party, of course, if you can imagine that. Makes sense. Okay, so that went on for for a while. I mean, those guys were probably that lineup for a couple years, and they played a lot of parties, played shows, played the Community World Theater. I mean, they I think there was a show where they played uh, with Adam singing. They played with um, early form of Nirvana, and that would have been Skid Row. So, we'll fast forward to about 88, 87, 88, I was in art class, and this dude was sitting across from me, and it was Tyler, so Tyler ended up singing in Inspector Love, and then singing in Green Apple Quick Step, and at that point, um, Inspector Love was looking for a singer, so Tyler I don't think Tyler had even met those guys yet, or if he knew, if he knew anybody, anybody in the band, it was probably, I, you know, my memory is a little shaky here, but I remember introducing, you know, getting Tyler in touch with, with those guys, I remember that. So anyway, I remember talking to Tyler about music, and he was talking about being into the blues and wanting to sing and being like, you know, he was talking about like different music he was in into, but I remember him talking about being a, like, something to do with the blues and, and, and singing, you know, that's, that's what I remember, and, uh, and I was like, yeah, I know, I know a band that's looking for, for a, a singer, you know, you guys, uh, you gotta meet them, whatever, right, so, yeah, so they, they did meet, and, um, started started singing in the band, and then it was still Inspector Love, and Steve ended up playing guitar in the band at some point. Like he 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 stepped in from uh, um, he was in um, oh, he was in another Tacoma band. What the fuck was that? Cactus Love, Cactus Love. I I think I think that was the name of it. And all of a sudden, it's like this, like they were. They were really, really good. I mean, the band was like 
talking in very, very interesting sounding. Very uh, like the sound was unique. They were a rock band with a punk edge, and it just was a it was it was a good thing, man. Like Tacoma finally had another band that was uh, that I I really liked personally, and they were friends. So um, anyway, so. Soon after that, they recorded this 7-inch, Spectre Love and the Ride Me Babies, Another World. And Todd Levins, that's right, Todd Levins was on the drums at this point for a little while. Um, and they did 700 copies. And this is a Roma Records. I don't remember, I think this was, um, I want to say it might have been John Atkins' label. Uh, he was in Seaweed or whatever. But... Yeah, this 7-inch came out, and, I mean, it was on, like, the, the Rocket, like, top 20 list, or whatever that was. There was a list the Rocket would do, and it was a newspaper, music newspaper in Seattle. I wish they still had something like that. Stranger doesn't really, I mean, it has music, but it's most, well, there's a lot of other crap in there. About weed shops now, it's just, you know, fucking music magazine again. Anyway, so, that came out. And, I mean, at that point, like, they were playing a lot of shows. They were playing, I mean, mostly locally. I don't know if they'd gone tour yet. But Inspector Love was, you know, I mean, they were a fucking real damn good band in Tacoma. No doubt about it. And I went to every show I, I could go to, you know. So, I was always, I'd go to band practices you know, um, just that, like I said, man, that was my, that was my life. So, move forward a little bit, and those guys decided, fuck Tacoma, we're gonna move to Seattle. That seems to be where our shows are. We're splitting, splitting it. So they all moved to Seattle. They're like, we're moving to Seattle. Fuck, fuck Tacoma. It's time. So they move up there. And they get a house, and, you know, I'm I'm still in Tacoma. I remember go, going up to visit them, and um, being like, fuck, you know? It, you know, I always like going to Seattle. It's just like the U District and, you know, Broadway. There's always just, like, more going on up there. So I was like, oh, man, you know? In a way, that was kind of the, the pull on my heart was to eventually get up there. And, and I did, but not, you know, anyway, I won't get into that. So those guys move up there, and at one point they kind of took on a funk edge, you know, it was kind of like they were uh, a funk, a, a funk punk band, but still had their own sound, um, and at that point, like, they got a manager, and, you know, maybe like labels were kind of getting inter interested, and at that, also at that point, the whole Northwest music scene was, you know, this whole sub pop thing. Everything was starting to, everything was starting to get a little bit more exciting. You could, you could see there were a lot of bands ha happening, and and, um, and those guys knew that if they were in Seattle, they would be in the middle of it. You know, they that was a wise move for them, for sure. So they do that for a while, and. They had labels, you know, if I remember right, they did some demos for labels before before they turned into Green Apple Quick Step. So they you know, there was some interest. I don't think anything ever was released as Inspector Love, that was a major label release. I may be wrong with that, but those guys could, you know, um help uh with the facts on that one. Anyway, so, uh, move forward a little bit. Now, now, I moved to Albuquerque before they become Green Apple Quick Step, but right about that point. So, the whole, the whole Northwest thing happened, you know, um, so, like, ni 1991, and at some point, they changed their name, and they, they, they got, uh, oh, yeah, no, that's right. 
That's right, so I want to go back. So Bob Martin started playing drums in Inspector Love. So we got to go back to about 89. So Bob Martin, who was also in Green Apple Quick Step, started playing drums in the band. And they were like, they were a freaking just rocking band at that, that point. There's no doubt about it. Whatever they, they were doing, I, I liked personally. So, um, moving forward, Green Apple Quick Step, at one point they changed their name. So it's um, Steve, Dan, Tyler, um, Eric, and Bob. And Eric is replaced by the bass player, a uh, woman, also singer, amazing singer and bass player. She joins the band and they turn their name, they change their name to Green Apple Quick Step. And that's about the time, so it might, it might have had something to do with getting a record deal or something They're like, you gotta change your name, guys. <laughs> that's what I'm guessing, I don't know. <laughs> but they changed their name. And um, I remember hearing a story that Madonna, uh, from, you know, she had Maverick Records or whatever, took them out. You know, I was like interested in interested in signing those guys, and um, I don't think anything ever came out of that. But they went with um, I don't remember Lala. I don't know if it was a subsidiary of Warner or something, but it was a major label deal. I mean, I remember I think I was in Albuquerque when this happened, but hearing from those guys that that they they toured with Tool and Rage Against the Machine. And there's some good stories from that. I want to I want to get those guys tell some of the stories from that tour because I remember hearing some and it was pretty funny shit. Um. Anyway, so anybody is still watching this video, you're probably like, oh my god, I don't care. But anyway, I, I'm doing this video for people that do care. So <laughs> I hope some of you guys care. Um, because I remember a lot of this surprisingly. So, uh, Green Apple Quick Step does that. They tour a lot. They, you know, they do pretty well for a couple albums, songs and movies. And then the third album gets recorded. And for some reason, it doesn't get released. Something strange. And I think it was a different record label, something like that. I'm not, I don't remember exactly. But then the band the band kind of fizzled out, they fell apart, and <clears throat> I actually got a copy of that, because there, there was promos made of that record, but that record, the third Green Apple Quick Step record, was not released as a actual release, but there were promos, which I would consider very rare for a collector, because I don't know, I don't think there's many, I happened to find one on a low levelers tour in a dumpster with a bunch of promos, if you can believe that, it's true, in Tucson, of all places. So, go forward, uh, I want to say about 1998, I move up to Seattle, and the Briefs had just got together. Now, this is strange too, because um, Chris, who played plays drums in the Briefs, I knew in Albuquerque when I lived out there, and he used to come see a band I was in called Scourge. He's even given me a compliment that, that he said this, man, and, and I remember I almost like, I was like, oh man, I can't believe that, but he, he said that I inspired him, I helped inspire him to play the drums, and I, and I, you know, whenever somebody says that, I'm like, oh man, that is, thank you. But yeah, so Chris lived in Albuquerque and used to come over to the Scourge house and go to all the Scourge shows. So Chris moved up to Seattle and we actually talked a little bit when he first moved up there and then he ends up meeting those guys, Dan and Steve, you know, from Green, Green Apple, old friends from Tacoma, and they start the briefs. And, um, but I didn't introduce those guys. So... And the Briefs were like, you know, it was like almost a dream band for those guys because they're all, you know, they were all into early punk stuff. And 
And then all of a sudden there's like this late 70s influenced like Buzzcocks punk band called The Briefs. And, you know, and and they were all my old friends, you know. Like, fuck yeah. And I was in the load levelers. And we, we did, I think we did one show together. We did a party together. Maybe we played two shows. I, I think only one. But, yeah, so, so those guys, you know, the briefs are still together. They've done, I don't know, six albums. You know, Steve has gone on to do, like, The Cute Lepers. Now Steve and Tyler have a band called The Hula Bees. Um, uh, Tyler has another band called The Little Ships. With, I think The Little Ships, there's somebody from Pearl... Um, I want to say Stone Gothers in the Little Ships, but maybe not. Anyway, so the Briefs are still playing. Uh, I think they're they're actually going to play punk rock bowling. I'm going to be down there with Act of Sabotage, so that'll be interesting. Anyway, so that's the story. It's long, and I hit on a lot of points. Um, for those that care, that's it. All right, thank you.